Joining me now in an exchange exclusive is the Stiefel chairman and CEO, Ron Krzyzewski. Ron Krzyzewski, it's great to see you back, Ron. Welcome. Oh, thank you. Good to be with you, Kelly. You know, a lot of people in the public are asking, what is going on with these payouts to bankers this year? Because now we're seeing all the headlines about multi-million dollar bonuses and this and that and the other. Is it? And we report on the show about how strong deal making was. You know, four trillion globally last year. Why was investment banking so strong? Well, again, a lot of it you can trace back to the impacts of the of the uh, pandemic on the economy and how many companies had to shift business plans to deal with, you know, really a pull forward, pull forward of years of digitization and how people behave. And that led to a lot of shifting of capital, whether it be through M&A or capital raising. So it's been a very busy year for the bankers and for the markets in general. We've seen it have a negative effect in some ways on names like J.P. Morgan and Goldman because people were surprised by how high those expenses were to pay out to those bankers for the work that they were doing. The reaction uh, to Seafold looks much different. Your shares are up 8.5%. Are you facing the same uh, head uh, expense challenges? I think all firms are. I think the difference for Stiefel is we're a highly variable compensation shop. We we pay for performance, and so if revenues go down, uh, our compensation is going down. And to the extent that we have, you know, various pockets of, of pay inflation, then we absorb it within the company. Uh, we target a comp to revenue, so uh, we all face challenges. But from a shareholder looking in they're going to see uh, some consistency in the way we pay people. And it'll be tied, highly correlated, Kelly, to revenue. Sure. So let's talk 2022 then. What's in the pipeline? Because obviously right. the underperformance of a lot of SPACs and IPOs leaves people wondering if the, those, those doors are quietly closing. Well, it's going to be, you know, it's always hard to talk about uh, pipeline in equity capital markets transactions. Our pipelines are very robust on M&A. Our pipelines are almost double what they were a year ago, and wow. we see a lot of potential activity. I'm, a, I'm somewhat cautious on, say, IPOs and on the equity capital markets because the markets are going through a, a, a bout of vol volatility here, and it's difficult to get deals done when the markets are jumping around like they are right now. January's been been very volatile. The VIX is expanding. So uh, yet we'll get through this and I'm optimistic uh, for the year in, in banking. On that note, let me ask you about the Fed. And, you know, as somebody in the financial sector, do you think their tightening is appropriate? What would you like to see and what do you think it will further do to markets? Well, the Fed, is, the Fed is clear. I think the real question is, is the Fed going to change its plan here? And I don't think it will. I think everyone's waiting for this conference, this, uh, you know, what's going to happen this afternoon. I think what's going to happen is going to be nothing in terms of what is expected. The, the Fed has said that they're going to tighten, and the Fed has said that they're going to roll off the balance sheet. Now, if there's any verb, you know, any words that make that more dovish or more hawkish, uh, the markets will react. My personal belief is not going to be anything said today that's going to change uh, what was put into place as a plan, you know, just what, about a month ago. So uh, we're not going to see much. But I'll tell you, Kelly, where, where I think the market is missing uh, a little bit or not taking into account is what's going on in Eastern Europe or as Putin would like to say, hmm. Western Russia hmm. in Ukraine. And I have to tell you, I think that that could end up, depending on how it uh, plays out, but I, in my mind, see where oil could be significantly higher and the dollar could be significantly higher at the same time. And markets wouldn't like that. I'll just say I can cut through all the economic stuff for you here and just say yeah. uh, markets aren't going to like that. No, and if that the, happens. the public would and like... I and I and I think yeah, go ahead. Well, I, I just I just I just feel that the you know the markets are are not uh, fully pricing in that risk uh, uh, of some conflict uh, in in the Ukraine. Well, and you're right. As much as we've been obsessing about the Fed, we have seen markets moving on a lot of these headlines, even just this past half an hour. Uh, it's relentless on that front. And if you're right about the impact, of course, that would be doubly significant. Ron, we'll leave it there. It's always great. And, 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 and that's why I have to I will say to you, Kelly, even though we just had a record year and we see uh, 
volumes and activity at very high levels. As it relates to the market in general, I'm cautious here, and, hmm. uh, and I think that there's more downside risk for the next few weeks uh, for sure. Uh, I don't think we've seen the lows uh, in 2022 of this market. So, uh, you know, keep the faith, but be cautious um, in this market.